Good morning and welcome to Wednesday's Pause for Thought by Father David. BBC Television is currently showing a revival of the playwright Alan Bennett's series of monologues entitled Talking Heads. The series was first broadcast in the late 1980s, with a subsequent series ten years later. They have been so successful that they have been included in A-level and GCSE English Literature Syllabus. Each monologue invites us into the secret thoughts of a particular character, and there are recurrent themes throughout – death, guilt, illness, isolation and issues of a sexual nature. The monologues are immensely moving, but also at times depressing and quite chilling, as the characters reveal some of their innermost thoughts and feelings. Actors such as Judy Walters, Patricia Routledge and Eileen Atkins appeared in the original series. But the revival remains true to the original scripts, but with other actors performing the roles, including Martin Freeman, Imelda Staunton and Harriet Walter. There are ten original talking heads with two new ones specially written for the revival by Alan Bennett himself. As we listen to each character talking to themselves, perhaps we recognise that we too, from time to time, have conversations with ourselves in our heads. This doesn't mean we are mad or suffering from some form of mental illness. It may just be the way in which we are processing what is going on in our lives at a particular time. There is another time in our lives when our minds are active and that is when we are asleep and we dream. All of us dream, though we may not always remember them, and it was Sigmund Freud who said that our dreams are a window into our unconscious. When we are awake and conscious, our minds are fully alive and active, and when we are asleep, our minds continue to be alive, though in an unconscious state. Our dreaming is in many ways a continuation of what has been happening during the day. And that is why, if we remember something of a dream, it often relates to something that happened during the day. It's claimed that during lockdown people have been dreaming much more than usual. And Google claims that weird dreams have doubled during the pandemic, with many people sharing their weird and vivid dreams on social media. Why might this be the case? One theory is anxiety. We're all living through a stressful and anxious period, personally and nationally. And this anxiety inevitably will help shape our dreams, and indeed, even our nightmares. It could also be the case that we're dreaming about aspects of our lives that we have temporarily lost and are missing, and this may bring us some comfort. There are also the many dreams we had for our lives. A special holiday, a new job, plans to study abroad, new business initiatives. The list of shattered dreams is endless. However, whatever form our dreaming may take, it is a perfectly normal and healthy part of sleep. And indeed, dreams may even help us to solve problems and deal with emotions and thoughts. There are many instances in the Bible of people dreaming. Pharaoh, Jacob, Abraham, the Magi, Herod's wife and Paul all had dreams, imparting to each of them important news or information about the direction of their lives. There is, of course, a much larger Christian dream, and that is the vision of the Kingdom of God, a vision we are called to focus on in our calling as Jesus' disciples. In our waking and our sleeping, this dream, this vision, should be our deepest longing, to see a world renewed, a world in which justice, peace and reconciliation prevail. This dream, however, must not remain in our heads alone, but also in our hearts, and the part we are called to play in its realisation. It seems appropriate to end today's pause for thought by quoting someone else's dream, Martin Luther King's, which he shared with the world in 1963, and still speaks powerfully to our world today. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, 
Every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places plains, and the crooked places will be made straight, and before the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope.